What's up guys, Rogue9 here, and with the last balancing patch, we saw, amongst other changes, a double punch nerf to Jackal's C70 assault rifle. The Spanish foot fetishist now underloads his magazines with 25 instead of the standard 30 rounds. Possibly something to do with jamming or something. Who cares about reasoning anymore anyway? And the damage that each one of those bullets does is also reduced quite substantially. So. How bad is this gun now and can the PDW-9 finally compete as a viable alternative? Time to dive all the way down into those juicy, juicy stats. Let's go! Damage from the C7's bullets has been reduced down to 42 points at close ranges less than 25 meters and 21 instead of 23 at ranges above 35 meters. This means a DPS or damage per second reduction of 53 up close and 27 at long range. Doesn't sound too bad, right? Well, the actual impact against full health opponents is actually not without consequences, actually. Up close, this nerf will require you to land one extra shot to down or kill your target in 4 out of R12 standard permutations. Level 3 armor body shots, level 2 armor body shots with rook plates, level 1 armor limb shots and level 2 armor limb shots with rook armor. Because of the 800 RPM fire rate, each of those additional shots means 75 extra milliseconds to take out the target. At long range, even though the DPS loss is minimal, additional hits will be needed in 8 out of the 12 cases. See data on screen now. And as before, this of course means 75 extra milliseconds time to kill in each of those cases. The first conclusion here is that these changes definitely have some bite to them, although if we compare the C7 stats to the rest of the assault rifles in the game, we can see that the gun can definitely still handle business. DPS used to be second best out of all of the assault rifles in the entire game, only beaten by Fuse and Ace's AK-12, and after the nerf it remains just about above average at close range, but since the C7 now has the weakest long range damage of all attacker rifles, this also means that the long range DPS went from slightly below average to quite significantly below average. The story for Times to Kill is basically exactly the same. Before the nerf, the C7 was above average against all targets at close range, but often below average at long range, and now only just above average overall up close and decidedly below average further away. So while this gun is definitely not as great as it used to be, it can still hold its own against most other assault rifles, but only at ranges up to 25 meters. But add to that the fact that the gun now only has 25 plus 1 bullets, and there is no doubt that what was once arguably the best attacker rifle in the game is now basically the ginger middle kid of the family. We'll still put up with it, it's not that bad, but let's be honest here, there are plenty of other siblings and cousins we'd rather hang out with. This video is brought to you by the Ridge Wallet. Longtime followers of the channel will know that I've been a fan of these wallets for years and they recently sent me their brand new Damascus Steel version. This one has to be the coolest one yet. Father's Day is coming up and the Ridge makes a great gift. You can check out the Father's Day guide on their website and find the best gear for your dad. So why not help him switch out of that bulky old leather wallet and grab him the ultimate wallet fit for the 21st century by going to ridge.com slash rogue9, that's ridge.com slash rogue9, and use the code rogue9 at checkout for a 10% discount and free worldwide shipping and returns. If we compare the stats of the new and disimproved C7 to Jackal's other main weapon, the PDW-9 SMG, then the main headlines really stay pretty much the same as before. The only stats that have changed with this recent patch are the damage, DPS and capacity, but even with those nerfs, the C7 is still the stronger gun at short range with excellent reload speeds, while the PDW is now much better at max range with awesome ammo capacity, great ADS speeds and a modest recoil advantage. 
If you are engaging targets anywhere below 25 meters, then the C7 is hands down, without a doubt, 100% undeniably still the significantly deadlier weapon out of the two, with a one or even two shot to kill advantage in eight out of the 12 armor and strike location combinations, and in the other four cases, the guns are simply just as good as each other. As before, each bullet saved means 75 milliseconds less TTK. At long range, the tables turn quite drastically and the C7 will now require at least one, two or even three additional shots to down opponents and that translates into up to 225 milliseconds extra TTK. That's almost a quarter of a second and considering the time ranges we normally deal with in Rainbow Six Siege, this might as well be a lifetime. That being said, it is worth keeping in mind that the greater the distance to the target, the less relevant these theoretical stats become. Time to kill is always calculated under the assumption that you fire the gun at max fire rate and all of your bullets hit, which becomes less and less likely at these kind of ranges. In addition to that, at these ranges you can see that we're talking about minimum times of just under a quarter of a second all the way up to half a second and more, even 900 milliseconds in the worst case scenario. These times become totally irrelevant in Siege because of course every single gun can kill in a single headshot, so if you hit the head, the time to kill could be as little as a grand total of zero milliseconds. What I'm saying here is that at long range it's not so much about who can land five, six or seven body shots, what decides the gunfight is really who hits the first headshot. And in addition to that, we also need to consider modern map design in Siege, where with every new rework, we see the maps changed in a way that reduces the number of long angles you can hold significantly. Rainbow Six Siege has always been a pretty close quartered game and over time it has become even closer quartered. Can you occasionally get into situations where you'll be fighting at over 35 meters? Yes, sure, it can still happen, but those occurrences are becoming exceedingly rare and we know from stats released by Ubisoft years ago that the most common kill range in Siege is in fact less than 10 meters on average. And in addition to that, we also need to consider that the damage drop off for the PDW starts much earlier at 18 meters and bottoms out at 28 meters, while that of the rifle doesn't even start until 25 meters. So over this specific mid-range distance, the C7 basically stays at full power until the very end while the PDW already becomes progressively weaker, creating a range where the rifle is significantly more powerful than the SMG. It's not until you get to 33 meters or more, and in siege terms, that's really far, that the long range power advantage of the PDW-9 kicks in. The numbers don't lie, at 35 meters or more, the PDW-9 is a lot more powerful than the C7, but once we factor in all of the caveats I just listed, I think it's pretty obvious that the tangible value of this long range damage advantage is questionable at best. When it comes to suppressing either of the guns, the conclusions are pretty straightforward. The reduced damage is 28 at close range and 18 after drop off for the PDW. And can you believe it? For once, the in game menu stats are actually right. For the C7, damage is 38 up close and 19 at long range, and the menu tells us. Thirty-five, so close and yet so completely and absolutely wrong. Mini side rant here. February 21st, 2020. One year and three months ago is the first time that I pointed out that the suppressed damage stat in the operator selection menu is wrong for almost every gun in the game. That's literally year 5 season 1 and we're now heading into year 6 season 2. And these goddamn stats are still fucking wrong. What the hell are you doing Ubisoft? How is this game still providing false information to millions of players? How is anyone 
supposed to make an informed choice about the suppressor if you have the wrong stats in your goddamn game. How hard is this to change? I don't get it. I just don't get it. This is such an easy thing to change, and not doing this is actually misleading every single player who checks the menu to try to decide whether or not the suppressor could be worth using for any particular weapon. Maybe it'll get changed soon, maybe it won't. If you want the actual, real damage info on suppressors, for now all you can do is check my suppressor video, link in the top right hand corner now and coming up in the end card. Mini rant over. So the question now is, are Jackal's guns worth suppressing or not? The PDW is, along with the MP5 used by Rook, Doc and Milusi, the worst gun to suppress in the entire game. If you attach a suppressor to the PDW, the number of close range body shots to down or kill against level 2 armors without rook plates will not change. For every other armor type, with and without rook plates, at short and long range, you will need at least one, two or even up to three extra shots to down or kill your target, completely and utterly unacceptable in my books. The C7, on the other hand, is actually very suppressible after the nerf, as long as your opponent is not wearing rook plates. Without those, every target will take the exact same number of body shots, at close range as well as long range, with the single exception of level 1 armors at long range. They take one extra shot. With rook plates involved, it's one extra shot for everyone at long range plus one extra for level 1s at short range too. My conclusion would be that suppressing the C7 can actually be extremely viable, but with a bit of a risk if your opponents bring rook. And so much for the stats, but one last thing. Now that scopes have apparently become a balancing tool, it's also worth mentioning that both guns have access to the three standard 1x scopes, and while the C7 also lets you attach the 2x, the PDW is limited to the 1.5x. If you have a strong preference one way or the other, that there might also be worth considering. So my final conclusion when comparing the PDW-9 and the C7E is that at the ranges that count the most, despite the recent nerfs, the C7 still has the advantage when it comes to raw takedown power. That being said, when you factor in all of the other factors, these two guns are more balanced than ever before. Yes, the C7 rifle still delivers the greater knockdown power up close and has outstanding reload times, literally the best of any rifle by far for whatever bizarre reason, and if you're a suppressor-loving sneaky boy, then picking the C7 over the PDW is a must in my books. But that's it. The PDW-9 is easier to use and control, with better ADS speed, slightly less recoil and now literally double the mag capacity. Add to that the long range knockdown power and there is now every argument to be made for Jackal fans to go ahead and shake things up a little by giving his alternate primary weapon a spin every now and then. As long as you don't use that god-awful ITA-12L primary shotgun, you should be all good. And if you're one of those people that runs double shotguns, get some help, you need Jesus in your life. And on that note, thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video and I will see you in the next episode.